Hey guys, it's Jackie and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I am going to be sharing my testimony. Um, I'm excited. I'm nervous. I feel like this is going to be a really long video, so you might as well um, grab a snack or something. I think this is going to be long. Um, okay, I'm nervous. So I feel like before I actually share like everything that happened and how I came to find Christ, I, I feel like I need to share background first. Um, that only makes sense. So let's start with how I was kind of raised. I was not raised in a Christian home. My family and I, were, we didn't grow up um, very religious or anything like that. My mom is Catholic, but she goes to church sometimes, not all the time. And so I, I honestly, I feel like together as a family, we probably have gone to church maybe four times in our whole lives. So we didn't grow up going to church. We didn't grow up studying the Bible. I, I never heard the story of Jesus. I didn't know who Jesus was, but as a young kid, I always felt like, sure, there, there could be a God. Like, yeah, sure, God is real, but I never had proof. I never, like, I was never truly convinced, I guess, but I was just like, sure, there, there could be a God. And again, had no idea who Jesus was. Um, never heard the story of him growing up. Also, side note, I don't know if this really plays in part, but just as more like background as how I grew up. Yes, I do have an Asian background, but we were brought up very American, a very American military family that was not religious. That basically sums up how we were raised. Now, moving on to like what actually led up to me becoming a Christian, I guess you could say, or just not, I don't really like labels, but not even just a Christian, but a believer, a true believer, what led up to that. And I will be saying a bunch of names in this video. And I, at first I wasn't going to, but then I realized these people played an important role in to what led me to be who I am today. And I'm so grateful for that. And, um, I'll, I'll never forget these people. Um, because of, because of the role that they played into who I am today. Okay, let's start with uh, my friend Karis. So uh, I first came, you guys know her as Charisma Star TV. Um, I first came across her videos back in 2012, maybe even 2011. But I remember I was about to film a Snow White makeup tutorial video and I wanted to get different ideas on how people filmed and things like that because I was really trying to do something creative. And so I searched up Snow White makeup tutorial ideas to get some inspiration and I saw her video. That was the first video I saw of hers. And I ended up not even doing a Snow White makeup tutorial video as you guys can see on my channel. I never ended up doing it because I saw her video and I was blown away. I was like, oh my gosh the production of this, the theatrics, like this is amazing. I don't, I don't even want to do my idea anymore. <laughs> but anyways, that is how I found her channel and I just became obsessed instantly. So I was watching a bunch of her videos and you could tell from like a handful of videos, you can see that this girl, um, she is religious if you want to call that. She studies the Bible or she knows the Bible and she believes in God and she's not afraid for people to know that. And I was like, that's, that's pretty cool. I still had that same mindset, like, sure, there's a God, like, sure. Um, but I was like, that's that's pretty cool that she's not afraid to say that she loves God. And at the same time, I was um, very close friends with um, James and Tati Westbrook. Oh, they weren't married at the time. But I was um, friends with Tati and James. I was a part of Tati's proposal video. And I met them through April Athena Seven. I'm sure you guys know her. We, you guys have seen in the vlogs. Like we used to be very, very close, all of us. And so that was like my little YouTube group of friends. I think I actually met Tati and James from April and Jessica. Jessica is the only one, you guys know Jessica. She's the only one that I've actually stayed in touch with um, out of like Every YouTube friend I've made, Jessica's the one that I've stuck close to this whole time. But um, anyways, I'm, I digress. So it was back in 2012 and James, James and Tati were my friends and James had reached out to me about this idea to be my manager for my YouTube channel. 
and I thought that was really cool. I was like, I've never had a manager before, but sure, let's give this a try. He had this idea of, um, cause we had this little like group of YouTube friends. So he had this idea of gathering all of us and creating this kind of um, like elite group of YouTubers that he would manage and that we would collab and we would um, work with brands and all this kind of stuff. And um, when you're pitching to a brand, it just makes sense. Like, look at, I have this long roster of girls that can promote your product. So he had this like idea to manage all of us. So I was on board with that and everything. And then he's like, oh, do you have any other YouTube people that you know that um, you'd like a part of this group? Who is your friend or who do you really like that you want to um, be in this close group with and I was like oh my gosh Karis from Charisma Star TV I haven't met her but I love her videos and I love what she stands for I think she'd be so awesome in this group so that's when I first reached out to Karis and um, connected with her so I connected them together long story short we were all part of this group and I became friends with Karis and she became friends with Tati and James as well there's a reason I bring these people up because they really did play a huge role. So just bear with me. I, this story is going to get long. So it was IMATS in 2012 when we all connected and met up. And that was the year that Karis won the very first Nick's Face Awards um, contest. And that was so awesome. I think because she was such a strong woman of God and her faith, um, she just like had this strong faith. It was so inspiring to all of us. I remember after IMATS, everyone kind of went off and did their own thing and I was just gonna go home, but Tati and James were like, hey, Jackie, do you wanna go check out church with us? Like, there's this church we go to um, nearby and they're gonna have service later tonight, so do you wanna go with us? And I was like, okay. Again, I think we felt a little inspired just by how strong um, Karis' faith is. And I was like, okay, sure, I'll, I'll check it out and it, would, it happened to be Mosaic LA. So that was the first church that I went to and I remember going in with Tati and James and um, I was like, I don't go to church often. I really don't know what like the etiquette is. I don't know, like I don't know what to do. So I just kind of followed them. We grabbed our seats. I, I was like kind of blown away by how huge it was. Like it wasn't just a small little church. It was like a huge auditorium and I'm like, oh, this is a lot of people. But we sat down and then they started with the worship music and I'm like, this is pretty cool music. It's not like what I expected because again, before this, the like four times I went to church with my family, it was Catholic. I'm like, wow, this is like so different. And I remember we were all standing, it was during worship music and they were playing a song. I believe it was Your Love Never Fails by Jesus Culture. And they were playing that song and I don't know what it was, but I just felt this warmth around me and I started crying. Like I just felt like I was so overwhelmed. I couldn't, I couldn't describe it. Everyone was there singing along to the song and I was like just standing there kind of awkwardly, like kind of looking around at everyone. And I decided to just read the lyrics off of the screen. And so I wasn't singing, but I was just kind of like looking at the screen, looking at the words and like, really reading the words and I just could not help myself. I started crying. Like I just felt this warmth, this love, and like it felt like a big hug. That's what it felt like. And I'm just standing there, I'm like, I, I, I tried to hold it in. I'm like, what is this? I don't understand why I'm wanting to cry right now, but I couldn't help it. I just started bawling my eyes and Tati's there like rubbing my back, like kind of comfort, comforting me. I didn't understand why I was crying service began and I was just so captivated by like how how they preached and made it relatable to life today. I have never seen that before. I was like, wow, the stuff that they're talking about is actually relatable. And I, I thought that was really cool. And I remember afterwards I told Tati and James like, like, wow, that was such an incredible experience. I can't even, I can't even put to words how like moving that was for me like that was amazing and I went home feeling so great that night I was like that was awesome church is awesome I remember driving home that night and um so I was driving home from LA to San Diego and as I passed Disneyland this is silly but as I passed Disneyland it was like the perfect timing the fireworks were going off and it was the most beautiful thing ever and I remember as soon as I got home I texted James I was like 
oh my gosh when i was driving home the fireworks went off as soon as i drove by disneyland and it was just so magical and i felt like that was just like the best conclusion to this day i felt like that was a sign from god like like what a day to celebrate basically and i remember that james texted me that he actually looked into it and there's a mosaic in san diego and i was like oh my gosh like this is a sign from god like i have to go here and so that's when i started attending mosaic san diego and they were at the time located in north park area um, they were just renting out this, it was very small, co especially compared to like, I went to Mosaic LA. That was like a huge auditorium with like hundreds of people, but Mosaic San Diego, it was really small. There had to be like maybe 20, 30 people at the most. It was a very small group in a small little room that they rented, um, in North Park. I felt like it was a sign that I needed to be there. And so I continued going. When I started going to Mosaic, that's when things started getting really, really rocky with me and Johnny. Um, I didn't understand it. And even Johnny, if you ask him now, he doesn't really understand it either. <laughs> but at the time, when I started going to church, I started listening to Christian music. Johnny didn't understand and he saw this switch in me and we started fighting a lot because of it. He's like, this is not you. Like, and he he comes from a very religious family. So Johnny's like, this isn't you. Like you're acting like everyone else in my family. Like, what is this? And I remember we would fight all the time about it. And we almost broke up a handful of times and we would just be sitting in the car crying, talking about how this isn't gonna work. And I told him like, I, I feel so strongly that I need to keep going to church. Like I need to keep going. And I was willing to leave that relationship completely to pursue a relationship with Christ. So it was like a whole thing and that lasted a, quite a long time. And I remember talking, you know, sharing these thoughts and like my relationships are not going to last. I would share that with Karis and Tati and even Jessica and April too. Like we were all such a close group and I would share everything with them. And eventually Johnny and I overcame that hurdle. I'm still gonna go to church, but I'm going to try and keep that separate from my relationship with Johnny. Like keep church and keep Johnny separate, not bring it up together, um, not try and blend the two. And so I continued going to Mosaic and I, I was loving the worship music. That was always my favorite and I was loving the word and just hearing more. I didn't have my own Bible yet, um, or maybe I did, but I didn't actually like, read it or go through it. But I loved sitting there every Sunday and just hearing, um, hearing like a little part of the Bible, hearing a story or two from the Bible or like learning about a different person in the Bible and how we can translate um, kind of their life into our own life today. And I just, I loved learning. I was so eager to learn. However, at that time I wasn't like opening up my Bible or anything like that. So Mosaic San Diego, they were like renting different locations. Um, so they started out in North Park and then they moved to um, um, like downtown San Diego. It was like right across from Petco Park. So they had a, a, a building there that they were renting and I was continuing to go there. Um, and then they moved again. It was still like downtown, but it was kind of like in this scary little alley. And I went to one or two services there, but it really scared me. Like the location of it scared me. And so I eventually stopped going. Um, it was not only the location that kept changing, but it was also the fact that I was going consistently for over a year and I could not make any friends. I would introduce myself to the same people over and over again. And now that I think about it, I, I realize that everything happens for a reason and God wanted me to find the church that I'm at now. So it's I have nothing against the people at Mosaic. I actually saw the pastor um, just a few weeks ago and I was like, hey, I used to go to your church. I love what you guys do. So I have nothing against them. I really feel like that was all part of, you know, the story to lead me to where I am today. But um, I couldn't make any friendships. I would introduce myself to the same people over and over again but I couldn't, I wasn't memorable to anybody. I would show up, I would sit in the back, and as soon as service was over, I would leave and go back home. And so that's kind of like how it was for me for the first year. And then once they moved to kind of the sketchy part of downtown, um, I didn't wanna go anymore and I was like, it was an easy decision for me because I, I didn't have 
connection. So at this point, my mindset is completely different from when I was a kid. Now I'm like, yes, there is a God and Jesus loves me. Jesus is God's son and he came and died for us and he loves me and I know this now and I felt his love so I know that it's real. So I guess you can say I, I became a believer of Christ in 2012, so seven years ago. That's when I became a believer. So then in 2013, 2014, I moved to Anaheim. I moved to Orange County and I moved up there to help my sister transition into her first year of college. I worked from home, so I was like, you know what? I can do my work anywhere, so why not use this opportunity and take advantage of it and go move to Orange County with my sister. While I was there, I found that there was a mosaic in Pomona, and that's like just not that far from Anaheim. So I was like, oh my gosh, Like this is a sign I'm supposed to still go to church. I'm supposed to go to Mosaic. And so I went to Pomona and I went two, maybe two times. I don't, I don't know. I didn't go much. I went like maybe once or twice and I just like, I don't know what it was. I just felt really scared to continue to go to a church and not be remembered. I don't, it, it, I don't know why that, that scared me so much. So I, I just didn't even want to try to go anymore. And I just, I didn't go back. I think it was 2015 that I moved, maybe, maybe 2015 that I moved back to San Diego and I wasn't going to a church, but I would still listen to uh, worship music. I still believed God was real. I felt his love and Jesus loves me. And at this time, um, I had already kind of lost in touch with um, Tati and James. We were no longer talking anymore. Um, Karis, you know, we just got so busy that we don't talk often anymore. We used to Skype all the time, like our whole little group, but that kind of died off, um, I wanna say before I moved up to Orange County. That kind of all fizzled out. Or maybe as I moved to Orange County, that's when it kind of slowly started to die out. So I, I kind of was alone in this journey. Couldn't talk about it with Johnny. Didn't have any other friends that I could talk to um, about you know going to church and what I believed in and all that kind of stuff. But it was 2015 when I moved back to San Diego where I found myself sliding into a very, very deep depression. And um, I didn't really talk about it with anybody other than Johnny. I, I couldn't explain like, why I was feeling this way. Like, why are you depressed? Why are you feeling this way? I didn't know. I don't understand why I felt the way I felt, but it was getting so, so bad. Oh God, I hate talking about this. Looking back, I feel like I should have been so, I should have been the happiest ever because I had an apartment that I loved. I was making a lot of money on YouTube at the time and I was doing really well, so like, why was I feeling this way? And I just, I couldn't explain it, but I was just feeling unmotivated to live. I would dread waking up in the morning. I didn't want to get out of bed. I felt so heavy that I just couldn't do anything. I couldn't move. I couldn't have a productive day. I would lock myself in my apartment and keep all the blinds closed and just kind of be there. I didn't know how to get myself out of this rut. Um, I just felt so worthless. I felt um, I felt so invisible and I felt like I just felt like what's the point? Like why am I here? I don't I don't understand why why I'm here, why I have to feel this way. I I became numb and this lasted the whole year, I I would look in the mirror and I wouldn't recognize who's there. I would sit on my counter in my apartment and on my bathroom counter and just stare at myself in the mirror, not out of narcissism or being conceited. I would stare at myself because I had no idea who that was in my reflection. I did not recognize that girl and I would look at my features and it just, it read to me as nothing. There was nothing there. And, um, God, my throat is so tight right now. 
I don't like talking about this because I don't ever want to share and open up and have it trigger something in somebody else. But I, um, I started to cut myself and um, a few people even pointed it out in comments before but I would say, oh it was my guinea pigs that scratched me or um, I would cover it up with lots of bracelets or I would wear cardigans that were long. I had a special knife in my kitchen that was just to cut myself with and um, I just, I was at such a low in my life. Again, I don't even know how, I don't know why. I don't know what caused it, I don't. I didn't understand what caused me to feel this way. What caused me to wanna hurt myself. I didn't know what caused it, but all I knew was that this is how I was feeling and I didn't know how to get rid of it. And so, I started cutting myself so that I could feel something and I would sit in my bathtub and I would go underwater and just think don't come up when you need air just don't come up when you need air and then I remember the moment where I, I, I asked for help is when I showed Johnny and his mom my cuts and that was me asking for help and so I showed them what I've been doing and Johnny's mom connected me with a therapist and I started seeing a therapist but I was seeing this person and I remember they told me they wanted me to take all of these meds and I said no I'm not going to and I feel like once I kind of denied that the sessions just started going downhill from there so I stopped going there and I just tried to keep finding different outlets to distract myself so that I wouldn't continue to feel this nothingness. And that's when I started doing yoga. And I got super involved in yoga and I even did teacher training and it came at such a perfect time because I was looking for a distraction. I needed something to distract me from myself. And so that's why I decided to pursue teacher training. Not that I wanted to be a yoga teacher, but it was almost like school like you had to go to class you had to do your homework you had to do all this stuff and I was like I need this I need to be distracted I need something to help me not focus on me and then the end of 2015 I remember Christmas Eve we always celebrate Christmas Eve with Johnny's family and then Christmas Day with my family Christmas Eve I met a dog named Robin I fell in love I fell in love instantly and then long story short, I'm sure you guys know the story of Zoe, but this dog Robin that I met ended up um, going from house to house to house trying to find a forever home and I was involved in trying to help find Robin at the time a home. She eventually made her way to my parents' house and they changed her name to Zoe. I was so invested in trying to find Zoe a home because there was something about her that just captivated me and when it didn't work out with my family, um, Johnny's family was like, okay, there's a family in TJ that will take her. And I just lost it. I was like, I can't lose her. I need her in my life. And so I decided to adopt her. That's when everything changed. I remember it would be late at night. Johnny was already asleep. Oh, I forgot to mention, Johnny had moved in with me when he when he saw what I was doing to myself. That's the reason he moved in with me. I hate admitting that, but it's the truth. He moved in because of how depressed I was. Because he thought he, if, if he's there, I wouldn't do anything. But it would be late at night and I would sit by my kitchen with my knife and I would sit there one... Zoe! It's okay, mama! And I would be sitting there by the kitchen wanting to cut myself some more and then I would look over at Zoe sometimes she'd be looking at me sometimes she'd just be sleeping but I would look over at her and I couldn't do it 
I wanted to so badly like and it's the weirdest thing to crave that but I did I wanted to hurt myself I wanted to cut myself so badly I couldn't do it because I knew I knew that she needed me she needed me to be alive and I know that sounds silly it's just a dog but I really believe that God sent Zoe to me to save me and Zoe honestly has played such a huge role into leading me closer to Christ and so I remember just feeling a mix of like sick to my stomach but also just so much love because she saved me from me and it made me feel sick because I was battling these things in my head. God knew that I needed something and he sent exactly what he knew would speak to me and it was Zoe. So it wasn't long after I adopted Zoe that the break-in happened. <sighs> my stomach hurts. It was one of the worst nights of my life and it hurts my stomach every time I talk about it and because it's so easy for me to quickly share the story because people on the daily as we're walking Zoe they're at, they ask like what happened and so I always it's like kind of on repeat like oh there was a break in at the house and this happened and then we found her two months later and now she's paralyzed from the waist down we don't know what happened um, yada 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 like I, I sh share the story all the time but to sit here and actually like walk you through and like relive the moments it hurts my stomach. I was so crushed, scared, so devastated that she was missing Coco and Zoe. Although I was heartbroken and devastated, I knew that we were going to find them and I knew that we were going to get them back. I felt it in my heart. And then two months after the break-in happened, that's when we finally got a real lead on Zoe. We were searching this whole time, right? But it wasn't until two months after where we got a real legit lead. And so we went down to the canyon where she was spotted and we did this big search and rescue thing. And we got Zoe back um, and it was right before Christmas. And without a doubt in my mind, I knew that it was a God moment. I knew like, I knew, I knew we were gonna get her back. I knew it. I know this story is like kind of a lot of different stories compiled into one, but it's because all these things really made it an impact onto what led me to where I am today. And so getting Zoe back um, was one of the most amazing moments of my life, yet challenging moments of my life as well because I had never seen a handicapped dog before. I had no idea what the first steps were to take care of a handicapped dog. But all I knew was that God brought us back together again because we are meant to be together. So for the first several months, so we found her, the break-in happened and we found her all at the end of 2016. So that's when that happened. And I remember the first several months, I kind of isolated myself from everyone because I wanted to just focus on taking care of Zoe. And once we got into this routine, I remember it was May, it was actually my birthday. It was May 7th, 2017. Um, it was my birthday and I remember Johnny's uncle, he's a pastor of a church and it was their first service in their new church. So it was like a big deal and he invited all the family to come and he's like, come celebrate our first service in our new church. And I, I went only to support Johnny's aunt and uncle, the pastors. I, Johnny didn't even go with me, he was working. So I went by myself um, only to support them. I wasn't planning to like, I'm gonna become a member of this church, I'm gonna keep going. Cause the church was really far from where I lived. And so I was like, I'm only gonna go this one time just to support them. So, and it was my birthday and I wanted to get out of the house and do something cause I had zero plans. And I, had, I hadn't been out in a long time because of Zoe. So I went to the church and I just felt something completely different. Like, I remember there were a handful of times I got emotional during the service, but I, I wasn't sitting there bawling my eyes out and falling to my knees or anything like that, but I just felt a connection. And I think it's because I, I personally knew a handful of people 
that were part of the church already so it was familiar but I just even the people that I met that first day I felt love I felt community just after my first day and I was like whoa is this how church is supposed to be because I never felt this at any other church like this is family this is a family and I continued going by going to this church it reignited this fire within me that I had several years back to want to learn more and know who God is and what what his love is all about know more of who he is and I have to tell you the fire was so hot under my butt <laughs> I could not get enough. I started attending youth groups. I started actually reading the Bible that I had. It was my small little pocket Bible. I know I've showed you guys before. I actually started reading it and I was I was just so moved and so captivated and just also the connection with other people there and like the other youth members and talking with them and just hearing their desire for Christ. I I was so inspired. I was so moved. I quickly became a part of the church and joined the tech ministry and I was working behind the scenes at the church and then um, shortly after that I became one of the youth leaders and you know I'm still all new to this but I think people could see that the desire in me was strong like I wanted to know more of who our creator was. I wanted to know more of the love that God has for us. And so I just, I continue to study. I continue to be involved as much as possible. So now that leads me to where I am today. I am still attending New Hope Church. It is my home. It is family. I love everybody so much there. And they have, every everybody there has played such a huge role in to helping me mature in my in my salvation in Christ, helping me to establish a true relationship with God. So now my mindset is, yes, there is a God. And Jesus is the son of God that came to earth to die on the cross for our salvation, for our sins, so that we can be redeemed. I serve a God that works in mysterious ways, that speaks to us in our own individual language, in our own individual way. and. He has spoke to me so many times, but so strongly through Zoe. So I know that this video was long, but just to kind of recap on the, the, major, the major events that led me to Christ was my friendship with Karis, Tati and James bringing me to Mosaic Church where I felt God's love and presence in my life for the very first time meeting and adopting Zoe and having her show me that life is worth living. Zoe's rescue after she went missing and going to New Hope Church and finding that community and that that spiritual family that I needed so badly. If you take away any of those events that happened in my life, I don't think I would have the same desire that I have to want to know Jesus. I think I would still be cruising along in this life thinking, yeah, there is a God and that's it. But now I, I know and it's because of what I have felt and the way that God has just shown his light in my life at every dark moment. I'm telling you, God speaks to us in a way that only we understand and nobody else does. Because when I share this story with other people, they don't understand it. They don't get it that God would send me a dog. Like, they just don't see it, but that's how God spoke to me because God knew I would understand it. And God is going to speak to you in a way that only you understand it. My whole YouTube career, I've always felt this desire and this, this purpose to inspire others. And the more that I follow Christ and the more that I dive into God's word, the more it's, it's, it's shown to me and it's like revealed to me how I'm supposed to inspire. And that's why I know that I was meant to share this testimony even though, gosh, my throat is getting tight again, even though it's painful for me to talk about some of the things that um, I've gone through, 
but I know that I'm meant to inspire and share my testimony and share my story with others to share and encourage that life is worth living. The world that we live in is so scary and so polluted with evil, but I know even in the midst of that, whether you want to believe it or not, in the midst of all this scary, chaotic evil and sin, I know that there is a God that is watching out for us. There is a God that is providing for us and the more that you are aware of him and the more that you pursue him, the easier it is for you to hear him speaking to you and to see him moving in your life. I can say this now, but back then, 2015 Jackie, I would laugh at you if you told me that God was providing for me. I would laugh at you if you told me that God was taking care of me. Because why would a God that loves me make me feel that way? Make me go through that. But I know now that through our suffering, Christ is revealed. And so that is it for my testimony. Oh my gosh, I almost ended this video without even, oh my gosh. I almost ended this video without even talking about me being baptized. So one year, exactly one year after I started attending New Hope Church, so one year later, it, again, I went on my birthday, remember? So it was my birthday. Well, technically it was a day before my actual birthday, but it was basically that one year mark that I decided to get baptized and give my life to Christ. And it was one of the best feelings of my entire life. And it was so, I was so emotional the day of and the weeks leading up to it because I knew that that's what I wanted to do. My one year mark, my birthday, that's how I wanted to celebrate. I wanted to give publicly, give my life to Christ and be baptized and renewed in his name. and. Oh, it's the best feeling ever. I feel like I could make a whole separate video about that, but how could I share my testimony and not even talk about all of this led up to me being baptized? I feel like there is, there's a lot of moving pieces within this story, but seriously, all of it is what shaped me to be who I am today. And I just want to say thank you guys for watching this full video. If you watch till the end, like, wow, thank you. Um, and just thank you for being a part of this journey. Um, I love you guys so much. And, and if you have any requests for any other faith-related videos you'd like to see here on this channel, please let me know because I would be more than happy to create that kind of content for you guys. I love you so much and I will see you guys in the next video.